Oh, hell yeah, brother. Welcome to the podcast. Stop crying poser. Greatest podcast known to man as voted by every member of Liquid Gang. Running a little bit late today because of our sponsor, Liquid Gang. I had to shoot some liquid diarrhea out of my butthole. You know what I'm saying? You've all been there. Maybe you're doing it right now. I know half you guys listen to the podcast while you're taking a shit. Let's shout out everyone who's currently pooping in the chat. OG Mickey Polar Tell, Captain Canuck, Cool Jerk 2005, Nick Maples 902 Rider, Switch Fakey Nolly, Train Wreck, Sully, Kurt, Hammy of Doom, Vulgar Tech, Liam Patrick and in Infamy. Man, that's a lot of liquid and a lot of gang members in the chat right now. I appreciate everybody for tuning in right here on twitch.tv slash Ninja Lifestyle every Friday right around 3.30 p.m. Pacific time, although it's 4.09 right now, and Polar Tell knows that it's time to give away some free Ninja Lifestyle stickers. What other podcast gives away free Ninja Lifestyle stickers? None. No other podcast known to man. Today our topic is Olympic wrestling. No. The champion, Kurt Angle, born December 9th. 1968 what year did kurt angle win the gold medal in the summer olympics all you guys have to do is know what year kurt angle won the gold medal now wrestling fans you might know this because he probably talks about it all the time i'm not a huge wrestling fan anymore i've never really been a huge kurt angle fan but uh, you know what? That's what trivia is all about. Switch Fakey Nolly says 1996. That is correct. He won the freestyle wrestling gold medal at the 1996 Summer Olympics. He was one of four people to compete an amateur wrestling grand slam, junior nationals, NCAA world championships, and the Olympics. In 2006, he was named by USA Wrestling as the greatest shoot wrestler ever and one of the top 15 college wrestlers of all time. Kurt fucking Angle. I don't even remember what his finishing move is called, but I think he puts you up on his shoulders and then slams you to the side. I remember Kurt Angle like pretty vividly when I used to watch WWF now called WWE, but I remember really being into the wrestling thing. I was more of a WCW guy, but you really want to get to the bread and potatoes of it. The bread and the meat and potatoes? You want to get into the bread, potatoes, soup, and salad of the whole thing. I was a big fan of ECW. That shit was more raw. It was more like violent. It was more blood. There was more titties on the screen. I was a kid too, so as soon as some titties come on the screen, I'm like, oh shit, this ain't no boring ass Nitro Girls or fucking Sables bitch ass, hell no. They're doing some crazy shit. Polar Tell says he had the angle lock. What, he fucked up your ankle? The ankle breaker thing? I thought he had one where he picked you up onto his shoulders and slammed you down. Probably called like the gold medal slam or something. I don't fucking know. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing fine. On this Friday, unless you're watching this on Sunday, I appreciate everyone who tunes in, but there's a big announcement right now. On iTunes slash Podbean, we reached our 10,000th download of the podcast, Stop Crying Poser. I'm excited about that. We've come a long way. It only took 122 episodes, but we did it. It was a matter of time. I wasn't going to give up. This ain't my 10,000th download of any podcast I've done. I've been doing podcasts for like 10 years now. But Liquid Gang, 10,000 fucking people strong. 10,000 people deep. Somebody wants to talk shit on you, you just say, okay, whistle. Wee weep. You know that whistling noise people do? Wee weep. <laughs> I can't fucking do it. <laughs> I can't fucking whistle, guys. Wee weep. And then with the whistle, the fucking Liquid Gang. Oh, you know what? Just fart. Just be like, and then you know somebody comes up, people start looking at you. It's like a uh, secret society. Of the liquid gang, motherfucker. You get jumped in, you never leave. You know, you either leave by box or by booty. That's the only way you can leave. <laughs> they used to say that you fucking leave leave but either either in a box or with some blood or something. I don't fucking know what it is. Anyways, ten thousand downloads, we've come a long way. Couldn't do it without you guys. Greatly appreciate you guys. Now first topic. I was browsing Twitter one day. I don't want to get on anybody's 
you know, panties all bunched up or whatever. I was on Twitter the other day and I saw somebody complaining. Twitter and Twitch right now is like the big time to come out if you've ever been harassed online. Like if you're a woman and a man's ever harassed you or like physically assaulted you or anything, now is the time for everybody to come out and air out everybody's dirty laundry, which is fine. That's good. If you fucked up in the past, people should have to atone for the bad things they've done. You know what I mean? Especially if you if you like raped a chick or something and the chick was too scared to come out. It's nice that these stories are coming out, especially to warn other people about these dangerous Twitch streamers or or YouTubers. Kids need to watch out for these people. They're looking up to them. They don't know what's going on behind the scenes anyways. It's getting a little bit out of hand now, okay? I saw someone, a streamer on Twitch, go on this big fucking rant about, uh, so it's a chick and she stood up from her chair, stood up and showed her butt on stream. Like not trying to show her butt, just turned around to, to answer the door or maybe like to look at the cat or something. And someone clipped it. And if you guys aren't familiar with Twitch, it's when you save, you save like a little 30 second clip so you can watch it later and show your friends. For example, if I'm playing Mario and I beat a really fucking hard level, I'll say, hey, somebody clip that shit so that I can rewatch it later and maybe put it on Instagram or whatever. So anyways, someone clipped her just standing up. That's all it was. It didn't have any title or anything. And she wanted this big rant about how that's harassment. I can't believe you people would clip me. It's evil. It's creepy. I feel like a victim now. And I'm like, dude, you just stood up, you know? And I'm reading through the comments. And what most people would do if they have to go to the bathroom or if they have to go get some water, they have a BRB screen. So all streamers are usually streaming through OBS. They have the opportunity, they have the option to just put on a BRB screen. So it turns off their camera and it just says, I'll be right back. Here on Twitch, my BRB screen is a skateboarding montage. So it says, I'll be right back. You know, while I'm gone, watch the skateboarding tricks. A pretty, pretty nice thing to do, just so you guys don't clip pictures of my butt or whatever. So anyways, uh, a lot of the comments are saying, why don't you just have a BRB screen if you're so, if you're so much of a victim, if, you, if you're so hurt by someone clipping a video of your stream, if that's so offensive and so horrible, then why not just spend the one minute required, probably takes about one minute, to get the BRB screen, you know? All you have to do, like the way I look at it is, you have a problem, let's fucking solve it. But I think the new age way to deal with problems is, you have a problem, let's complain about it for as long as possible without making any steps to correct it at all, and maybe we'll get some social, some social points out of this. You know, a lot of people came to her rescue. The white knight came and said, you're right, what a horrible world this is, what a horrible world. You stood up and someone clipped it, uh, your clothed butt. Oh my God, that sounds so horrible. Are you okay? Perhaps I could donate some money. Would that help? Would that somehow help soothe your soul from having to stand up and having someone's eyes look at you? Like, people stand up every day. Unless you're paralyzed, everyone stands up. It's like, it's not that crazy of a deal. And every once in a while, Let's say you're at In-N-Out Burger and you're sitting down waiting for your order and you stand up and you walk and you get your double-double. There might be some kid who looks at your butt. <gasps> oh, 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 no, 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 Minnie Mouse, no. Oh, oh. Like, like, what the, is it that, is it that degrading? Come on now. So, here's the second half. Everyone wrote, hey, maybe you should get a BRB screen. And then, oh, you want to talk about the, the white knight in shining armor. They came in and said, she shouldn't have to. You be quiet, young man. She shouldn't have to. She should be allowed to live in a world where you can stand up and no one does nothing. Everyone on Twitch turns their heads to the opposite side or blindfolds themselves at any moment. At any moment. And then... Then, before these motherfuckers all got blocked, they started putting pictures of her being, like, scantily, whatever, you know, like, they had one one of her, like, leaning down, like, holding her tits together, you know, like, come on, man, like, now you're the victim when you got these pictures of you showing off your tits and ass, and now suddenly you stand up, and someone clips it, and now they're, they're supposed to, like, it made a big, like, hate train, because she called the dude out by his username, 
And all these fucking, <laughs> all these people went to try to bully this dude who clipped it. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I don't think it was an accident, but it certainly could be. If you go through my clips right now, there's a lot of them that have no context. There, there's nothing funny happening. There's nothing interesting. It's just me playing Mario. I don't say anything funny. I think people sometimes accidentally clip things. I don't think that's what happened in this situation, but I feel like clipping someone standing up and just complaining about it and getting so much support, that's what confused me. I'm all for supporting people who are actually being harassed and actually being victims, but I feel like this is the slippery slope that we talk about. This is always like the concern, right? Is first, you know, you get people who are really, really hurting and they really need to tell people about this big controversial thing that's happening. We've seen it a lot in the Smash Brothers, Super Smash Brothers community, whatever. We see it in these other communities, people that are, that are just harassing girls or, or sending too many dick pics out to girls or, or even like fucking with underage girls and shit like that. And everyone's coming out. Put these motherfuckers out to dry, man. Hang them out. Fuck it. Snitch on everybody. But the slippery slope is now these other people, they go looking at these people. They go, oh, damn, that person's a victim and she got a ton of attention off this. Obviously, that wasn't their goal, but some people look from the outside looking in. They say, wow, that person got to have a lot of attention, man. I wish I could figure out a way to be a victim. Hmm, let's think about that. Well, there was that one guy that clipped me standing up. I guess I could really, like, go all out and, like, put all my eggs in that basket and pretend that I just got raped. Like, I mean, ah, we're, we're talking about this with a little bit of humor, and it's not really that funny of a situation, but you got to understand, from my, <laughs> from my perspective, we've run out of problems. Like, you want to talk about privilege, if your biggest problem of, of the week is that you stood up on stream and someone clipped a, a, a short video of your clothing butt, if that's your biggest problem, then welcome to the greatest country of all time. Like, welcome welcome to the greatest life on earth. Like, you you, you are officially the 1% the of, of having no problems whatsoever. Like, that's, that's where it is. And the fact that you can twist these weird, like, sad men and, and boys and, and just weird people to, like, defend, oh, she shouldn't have to have a BRB screen. Like, motherfucker, I shouldn't have to lock my doors. In a Twitch chat, we shouldn't have to have mods. But you do, because they solve a problem. You have too many dickheads in the chat, they help. You, you fucking feel weird when you stand up, the BRB screen would help. It would happen. It's it's done. I don't like I shouldn't have to have insurance if everyone on the road drives correctly, but they fucking don't. You know what I mean? We have to be prepared. And when you're in a situation like this, this is what this is what really makes me so passionate about it. When the solution is so simple, it's free, it's easy, it's simple, it takes no time whatsoever. The solution is not to change to change all weird men across the world. The solution is not to to shame creepy people and just tell them to stop being creepy because eh, in the past mm, 10,000 years, it hasn't worked. The solution right here would be the BRB screen. It, it takes less than a minute. I'll tell you how to do it. You go to OBS, you right click, you say start new scene, and then you just put the word BRB. Done! <laughs> Finished. We figured it out, the solution. Rather than go on the weird Twitter rant and try like trying to change the world. I get it, you know. I get there's weird people out there, but this, this is not, <laughs> this is not the issue. Vulgar Tech says, "Yes, yeah, seriously, take a decent pic of your ass and use it for your PRB screen." Come on, people, or something, you know, or you know what? Get a picture of you in a fucking nun outfit and have that be your BRB screen, or or the the, the fucking the face cover mask, whatever. Get a face mask, get a bandana for like Brett Michael style, wear an overcoat, two sweaters, and make that your BRB screen. You're done. Good. I don't know. <sighs> I feel like I'm calling this person out. I don't even remember what their name was, but I read through the <laughs> I read through the replies and I'm like, dude, like people seriously cannot agree on anything. And that's kind of like that's kind of like how the country is right now. That's how the world is. No one can fucking agree on anything. Because if I go on there right now and I type, just have a BRB screen, I'm going to get 10 responses saying, she shouldn't have to, you fucking asshole. Wow, show some fucking sympathy, you piece of shit. And I'm like, what? Sympathy? What? <laughs> I, I mean, what do you mean? Like, 
<laughs> fuck up my, like, let me show my ass and get a bunch of donations. Like, I don't, what the fuck sympathy? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe they're trolling. Maybe everyone's trolling. Maybe I fell for it. I don't know. All I know is Kurt Angle, you don't want to fuck with him. Okay, you look at his butt, you're getting fucking diamond cutter. You're getting fucking jackhammered. You're getting fucking speared. Why does it, it's all Goldberg shit? I don't know any other wrestling. You're getting figure four leg locked, motherfucker. Motherfucker what? Anyways, also in life, I want to get sponsored, people. I don't have that many topics today. It might be a short podcast, but I want to tell you guys this right now. I want to get sponsored by 211 Steel Reserve. There's no one, no one out there repping harder than me. I got the 211 tattoo on my leg, the Steel Reserve logo. I drink, fuck, I drink two 211s a day. That's 422s I'm drinking every day. I'm the only one who makes 211 mixed drinks. I'm the only one who's been repping it this long. I have fucking gold medal athletic abilities when it comes to Mario World, when it comes to Mario 64. You got this dude, Grand Pooh Bear out there, sponsored by Red Bull. This guy's playing little little fun little games. I'm playing the man's game, Super Mario World. This guy's fucking getting free events. I went to his Grand Pooh World event at uh, Mandalay Bay or wherever it was at the Luxor. Somewhere on the strip. Big ass event. They had a, they were serving drinks called the Grand Blue Bear. Man, that shit was pretty good too. That shit was delicious. But I'm saying, 211, we're missing out. Fucking whole world out there full of gamers that we could be spreading the 211 to, spreading the love. All right? And we're just fucking around. We're messing around. Listen, I say the F word. Fuck. Fuck. It happens. Oh, no. Ooh, the F word. Guess what? You got to be 21 to buy this shit. So I'm the perfect spokesman, poster child for the, for the, gaming, for the gaming fuel known as Steel Reserve 211. I drink every flavor, too. You think I didn't know about all the flavors? The fucking... Silver can, boom. The black OG can, boom. The 40 ounce, boom. Oh, what flavors you got? Pineapple, strawberry, fruit punch, blackberry, blue ras. I, I know this shit. I live this shit. Watermelon. I'm here. Alloy series. Man. Oh, well, I'm just saying. I, uh, <laughs> I tried to reach out years ago before the Alloy series. I never gave up hope. I never switched it up to Four Loco. Ugh. I never went back to the camo black eyes. Oh, no, I stuck with the Steel Reserve, even when they ignored me. They ignored me, of all people. The only person left in the corner. You know what? I'm single-handedly responsible for people buying, I'm going to say, 20,000 cans of, of 211. Single-handedly, just based off my little subscribing song, based off how long I've been talking about it. Also, you want to look at my backyard, I got 12 trash bags filled with crushed 211 cans. 12. How many cans do you think are in each bag? Probably like 300, 400. So that's that's in my own backyard alone. Probably 4,000. And you know what I'm doing with them? I'm recycling them because I'm a good man. Because that's the way a 211 drinker does it. He recycles them. He fucking cares about the environment. Cares about video games. Cares about his fellow human beings. When I see a friend who's down and out... I say, you know what, bro? You having a rough day? I know what you need. <laughs> Crack open a 211, hand it to them. They look at it. They sniff it. They go, mm, what is this? I go, that's fruit punch, baby. Take a sip of it. Turns them right around. It's like a fucking, it's a, it's a 2020 sensu bean. That's what it is. It helps your life go better. And you know what? At my local grocery store, it only costs $1.50. That's right. I'd gladly pay $2.50. That's how much... That's how much I appreciate it. That's how good it is. But for some reason, still, to this day, the 211 Steel Brewing Company has been ignoring me. And I don't know why that is. I'm not asking for a, a million dollars a year. I'm just asking for some support. Because I've been, I've been carrying a lot of weight. Look, I got the posture corrector from how much I've been carrying this company on my back. I got back problems now. Oh, man, I'm going to have to drink a 211 tonight to solve this problem. It's just, it's just a fucking a vicious cycle now. And I, all I need is some support. I need some support back. I don't need it. You don't have to. And I do this out of the kindness of my heart and for the enjoyment I feel. But you know what? It'd be nice. It would be nice. You know, every once in a while, you'll open a door for somebody and you hold it. You say, here you go. And they say, thank you. That's what I've been fucking doing for the past 10 years. You're welcome. All I need is maybe you hold the fucking door open for me one time. Maybe. 
And then we could be friends. And we can hang out. And who knows? Build. We could build a fucking franchise together. Steel Reserve and Ninja Lifestyle. Welcome to the podcast Stop Crying Poser, sponsored by 211 Still Reserve, the most delicious sports drink on the market right now. Not for sports, but definitely will make you feel better all the time right now. Imagine some type of little tagline like that. We can work on it. We can figure out what fits the brand just right. Or or what if 10-year anniversary, 211 Still Reserve with my face on it. Just going, mmm, this is good. Mm. 211 commercial, Super Bowl commercial. You kidding me? I'm coming up with all these ideas. Off the top of my head, I know a guy, VL Scoot. You ever had a video game named after you, Super 211 World? I can make that happen. I know a guy. We got to talk numbers, but we could do it. Man, I'm just saying. They, You know what? They would be committing career suicide to pass on an opportunity like this. But you know what? It doesn't matter because I'll be around. I don't give up on things I care about. I don't. I don't. I don't know about you guys, and I don't care. You know what? It's like when you have a child and you're on intervention who's addicted to crack and you're like, you know what? I need you to get better, but I'm never giving up on you. I'm never going to stop loving 211. Even if they don't support me, I'm never going to stop. I'm never going to stop loving you. 211 Steel Reserve, Fruit Punch. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. I'm just I'm just saying, if we if we collectively get the word out there somehow, some way we get a hold of a sales rep or figure out a way for us to make this work, some type of mutually beneficial situation so that I can I can help build the team of 211 drinkers. We can just, we, what? okay, hear me out on this. You watch UFC, you get a Modelo commercial or Bud Light commercial. You watch boxing, you get Tecate. What happens when you watch Mario World on Twitch? Thousands and thousands of viewers every day. You ever get a 211 fucking ad? Ever a 211 background? No. Any alcohol whatsoever? No. You know what I call that? A, a market, a free market, just dry. No, no, no competition. Just, except what, Red Bull? You think Red Bull can hold a fucking flame to a 211? I think not. I think not. Fuck. You got me fucked up with that one. Anyway, that's my idea. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll make a clip. We'll make a clip of this. We'll send it over to them. We'll save it. I'll make a highlight. And all you got to do is we're going to set. We're all going to fucking spam their shit. That's how I first got on DVS. Mind you. Don't forget. I had all my fucking followers back in the day when I was a big time YouTube and skateboarder. So that everybody hit DVS. Fuck with them. And eventually they were like, you fucking win, dude. They sent me a real message. Said, you win. What's your address? We'll send some shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking right. Oh, man. That's. Ah, <sighs> that's uh, that's my idea. Whatever, whatever. Let's uh, let's go to the news. There's not really that much good news. There's Kurt Angle right there still. I've been staring at his fucking weird looking ass. Oh, slow news week in uh in Las Vegas. So we're gonna. <laughs> this is the most interesting article I could find. Pet pig found abandoned in Red Rock Canyon. It's only what four sentences. A couple of local hikers found an apparent pet pig abandoned in Red Rock Canyon on Wednesday morning. Red Rock is this area where you drive out, you park, and then you walk around, you do like a hiking trail. You, it's called Red Rock because you look at the rocks and they're big, big ass red colored rocks. They're just naturally red. There's some like Indian carvings on the wall and there's like these uh, fire pits that have been made by Indians or something, by na natives, excuse me. Whatever. You go out there, it's a hiking trail. I don't know why you'd take your pig out there. That's a real dickhead move. Continuing the article. The pig found the right hikers. As Michael Phoenix said on Facebook, he gave the pig water and the last of his dog's food on the Little Zion train. It says train. I, I'm almost positive it's supposed to say trail. The Little Zion trail. Because Red Rock is filled with trails. Not, it's not filled with trains. There ain't no, there's no fucking train going through Red Rock. Red, little Zion train. What the fuck is that? Phoenix posted the pig was very friendly. The pig was taken to Wendy's Ranch and Rescue. They took that pig to Wendy's? Oh, shit. That was the wrong place to take him. Wendy's? Home of the Baconator? You about to get fucked up, little pig. You, 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 you fell for it, you piece of shit. Oh, man, take, you should have took him to Steve's. Steve's house. Me, Ninja Lifestyle's house. I would have gave that pig some dog food, 211, 
would have had him oinking. We would have had an oinking good time. Shit. I took him to Wendy's Ranch and rescue. So, yeah, somebody found a pig hiking the end of the story. I mean, that's what the fuck it is. Anyways, we got uh, skating news now. Vance welcomes Andrew Reynolds. I don't know why this is worthy of news. We don't talk about skating too much on this podcast, although we probably should since a lot of the people that watch this show are skateboarders. Andrew Reynolds rolled for America for a long time. Uh, he's probably cool with it. I didn't watch this video. This video is supposed to be the all the information. I was hoping to get an article. There is no article. So this is just kind of like a PSA. Uh, Vans welcomes Andrew Reynolds. He used to be on America. Now he's not. I know a lot of people. A lot of people are big fans of Andrew Reynolds' shoes. I guess over the years he's come out with some really really good shoes i've never i don't think i've ever skated americas back in the day we had rob brink on shredcast and he was uh like the social media guy for america and he said you know what i had a great time on the show i'll send everybody a pair of shoes and i was like fucking awesome dude i looked on the website america didn't make no all white shoes no white puffy shoes all they made was black shoes and brown shoes gray shoes they had every color of the goddamn spectrum except for white shoes and i feel like it's crazy to me that white shoes are so hard to find because they look so cool. They look good. You ever see somebody with some real fresh marshmallows on their feet, <laughs> some ice creams? You go in, you're like, oh, damn, you're looking good today. You know it's not going to last. You know that white shoe's going to slowly turn brown and gray. But on day one and day two, they look good. So it's weird to me that people wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't make more white shoes. I know when I worked at the skate shop, the colored shoes sold the best. I remember there was... Uh, Adrian Lopez, the AL50s, uh, Circa, they come in all white, they come in all black, and then they came out with one that was, it was the most orange, it was, it was oranger than a traffic cone, it was the most orange shoe that you could ever imagine, and everyone said those shoes are ugly as fuck, they will never sell, these fuckers sold out in two days, man, shoes that grab attention, sell the fuck out, I'm not saying that they're like, fashionable i'm not saying that they that they look good for more than you know a couple days but those bright ass orange shoes stood out so hard sometimes it's nice to be wearing some shoes that are going to be a conversation starter so you know what i don't blame andrew reynolds for leaving america maybe he wanted to wear some bright shoes maybe he wanted to wear i mean vans vans they have whites white slip-ons you know what i'm saying at least they have they have something you can work with I don't know. Whatever. That's uh, that's all I got for the news. I mean, I said it's going to be a short podcast. It is going to be a short podcast. The only topic I have left is a question for you guys and a little explanation of how I used to run my life and how I still do when it comes to business. Back in the day, my very first ever business venture was called Black Ninja T-shirts. If you type in Black Ninja T-shirts on YouTube, you're going to get some fucking really funny videos. But... When I sold those t-shirts, I, uh, I would buy the t-shirts. I would have a friend to print them, my friend Dave DeLuna. If you're local and you're trying to get t-shirts printed, hit me up. I'll, I'll send you his way. Very affordable. He does the t-shirts very quickly. He does all my printing. He always has. So he printed my first run. Let's say it was like 25 shirts or 30 shirts. Printed them, sold them, bought new shirts, printed them, sold them, bought new shirts, printed them, sold them. So I didn't have like a... A real budgeting system. What I had was a jar. I had a jar filled with cash. Every time somebody gave me some cash for a Black Ninja t-shirt, I put that cash in a jar. And it'd be like 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. And then when I go to restock, I buy more t-shirts, use that money out the jar. Not out of my wallet. Not out of my bank account. Not on my credit card. I'd always go out of the jar. All profits went into the jar. Everything that I spent on, on that particular business went from the jar, it was only the jar. And I had a different jar for other things. Uh, first run of skateboards, I had the skateboard jar. So, I thought it'd be interesting to maybe, maybe make a video where I take all, I found the jar, okay? Bottom line is I found the jar the other day, like hidden under my bed somewhere. I'm like, oh damn, old t my old Black Ninja t-shirt jar. It's probably a hundred bucks in there now. And there's, there's like coins and shit in there. And little notes, there's a couple of notes for uh, like uh, inventory notes. I was wondering if maybe I could make a uh, a YouTube video called like gambling <laughs> gambling my first company's profits. <laughs> Where I just take all that fucking money, 100 bucks, go uh go to the slot machine, man, and play some $5 hands and let's try to turn that 100 bucks into 20,000. 
Let's <laughs> take my first profits and fucking throw them away. Because I don't have Black Ninja t-shirts no more. All this shit is done. It's done by third party now. There still is Ninja Lifestyle t-shirts. I wear them sometimes. You see them in my videos. But they're sold by uh, like T Teespring or something. So I don't do that shit. And uh, I think it would be a funny idea. I'm glad that some of you guys get a kick out of it in the chat right now. I think it would be cool. It would take my 100 bucks, my hard-earned money from when I was fucking, what, 17, 16 years old, fucking putting, putting money in jars. Also, I got a couple of jars filled with coins. There's a coin shortage. What if I take my coin jars, which, you know, I'm not planning on getting addicted to meth anytime soon. I wasn't going to fucking turn in these coins anyways. But now I have a reason I can turn in all these coins. Put the fucking Black Ninja t-shirt money together, go out there, gamble this shit, play some high fucking, some high risk shit. Right now, I stream uh, gambling probably twice a week here, and it's only usually like 20 or 40 bucks, whatever, not a big deal. And I'm usually playing like nickel games, so I'm only betting about a dollar a hand, and um, my hopes when I bet about a do like a dollar a hand, I'm hoping to get back like a... Uh, I don't know, 300 bucks. Like, that'd be a big win, right? That'd be a big win. I want to go out there with this fucking Ninja t-shirt money and blow that shit in like 10 minutes. And that way, we do some high-risk shit, some $5 hands, maybe some $5 four cards. We're playing like $1.25 a hand. So then we're looking for like a $10,000 profit or even like $2 hands, $20,000 profit. Wouldn't that be a fucking, what a story that would be. 16 year old fucking dream <laughs> 16 year old's dream to make twenty thousand dollars off of his t-shirt idea finally comes true fucking 15 years later <laughs> when when he takes the profits and gambles them on on a kino game <laughs> i think uh i think it's a cool idea look forward to that i pretty much already made my mind up we're gonna fucking do that that's gonna be definitely a real thing that's uh that's truly all i have to talk to you guys about that's the end of my podcast usually we would still be podcasting for another mm, about 13 minutes but it's a short episode today we started late you know what blame the liquid gang if i didn't have explosive diarrhea today maybe i would have had enough time to come up with some topics but you know what with all this coronavirus and just depression and race wars and protests and everyone's mad about everything there's not that much interesting shit going on you know, I'm not going to sit here and talk about fucking Portland. I don't know what's going on over there. A bunch of moms holding hands. A bunch of people crashing into each other. A bunch of fights, man. You know what I want to do? Spread some positivity. I want to spread the dream of gambling this money. Maybe how to make some money off it. I want to spread the dream of the 211. I want to spread the dream <laughs> of, of making BRB screens on your fucking Twitch channel. I know there's a lot of important shit going on out there, but... I can't, I can't stand to just worry about coronavirus all day and to talk about protests all day. It's too much on me, too much negativity, man. I hope the world does change uh, for the better, but as far as being an enter entertaining podcaster, it's not, not working for me, man. But I hope you guys have a great weekend. If you tuned in late, don't worry. You can rewatch the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, or Podbean. On Sunday, the repeat, the rerun comes out on Sunday. Everybody give me a hell yeah so I can shout out everyone who who stuck around. Who stuck around through the through the rants, through the through the, the sad stories, through the good stories. We got OG Mickey, Hammy of Doom, Blaze the Reaper and the Wolf Mother, Vulgar Tech, iBook Boy, Cool Jerk, Hammy of Doom, Train Wreck, OG Mickey, Vulgar. I appreciate you guys for hanging out. I hope you guys have a great weekend or a great week. Remember, maybe you have a long drive to work. Maybe when you're at work, you're doing your little data entry bullshit or wherever you work at. Maybe you're at Wendy's or Outback or fucking in and out Maybe you get to have a headphone in. Put one headphone in, fucking download the podcast and listen to me. Uplift your spirits, man. You, you want to hear that 211 rant at work? Bro, you'd be flipping the fuck out of them patties. You'd be ready and motivated to change your life. Or to go gamble it. Gamble it away. Anyways, I appreciate you guys for hanging out. And I uh, promise next week we'll have a more fuller, a more fuller podcast to enjoy. But I think we do a pretty good job here. We had some laughs. We had a good time. Don't go anywhere because I will still remain streaming after this. But as far as the podcast, that's going to be it. You guys have a great week. Great weekend. Don't drink too much. But... You know what? Don't drink too little. And make sure to go out there and gamble with whatever you got. Throw it away!
Throw it all away. God damn it. To 11, it would be career suicide not to endorse a gaming athlete such as myself.